E. H. Shepard, The Man and the Artist. A Victorian Childhood. Ernest Howard Shepard was a child born in the Victorian era. In 1879 saw the great political rivalry of Prime Ministers Gladstone and Disraeli. It was a time of colonial and industrial power and might. The late Victorian and Edwardian period was remembered somewhat inaccurately as a romantic age of classic novels and children's books. Books like The Railway Children, The Secret Garden, Wind in the Willows, Peter Pan and Kipling's The Jungle Book. These books gave a nostalgic golden dapple glow to the age, before the great social political upheaval of the First World War. Books were printed industrially in their masses, but with the great titles of books came a hand of illustrators who would be just as great as the authors who wrote them. Born in a typical respectable middle class family, Shepherd's parents had the taste of the theatrical. His father an architect, and his mother a daughter of a distinguished water colorist. Both shared a love for the arts. It would be these influences that would give the young child the zest to illustrate. Shepherd would draw typical scenes of the time, drawing his starched up aunts and scenes of battle and bust. This is one example of Shepherd's work at the age of nine. Shepherd would come back to his childhood many times to illustrate the scenes and memories of his happy childhood. There are even examples of Shepherd's early influence in his schooling years. It would be from here that Shepherd would learn to be an illustrator and get his scholarship. The Makings Just after Jubilee Day, Ernest was granted a scholarship to the Royal Academy. It was in the early 20th century he found a job working as a comic cartoonist for the famous Punch magazine. Like other great illustrators of the time, Shepard would be a leading figure in the Punch magazine, making his last drawing in the late 1950s. By this time, E. H. Shepard was married to Florence Chaplin. He would draw many sketches of her, and she would model for him in some of his pictures. It was by that time the war had caught up with him, and by 1914 he was separated from his wife to join the war. Captain E. H. Shepard would spend his time drawing sketches of his time in the trenches. He always struggled to think up of jokes, but maintained uh, an industrial flow of work. Here is a famous example of Shepard's wartime cartoons with the famous cartoon The Testing of a Patriot. By the end of the war he achieved the rank of a major and was awarded the military cross for his service in the Battle of Passchendaele. The Book Illustrator in the interwar period, Shepard was at the pinnacle of his success, delivering his most memorable and notable work, illustrating Wind in the Willows and the Winnie the Pooh series. This was Shepard's work at his best. Here is an extract of the story with the finished pictures. And all ready for a day on the river, the mole settled down to snow. The next thing the mole heard was Rat saying, How's this then? And in his hands was a fat wicker basket. But what's inside it? said the mole, full of curiosity. There's cold chicken inside it, replied the rat briefly. Cold tongue, cold ham, cold beef, pickled gherkins, salad, french rolls, crisp sandwiches, potted meat, ginger beer, lemonade, soda water, oh, stop, stop, 
Doc. His drawings gave the characters a sense of life and being. That is the only way to travel. Here today, in next week, tomorrow. It was noted by Kenneth Graham's wife. It's almost as if their pens were dipped in the same world. Nineteen years. Nineteen years. Twenty years. Being quite the Victorian illustrator, his professionalism and industrious style is remembered by many of fellow artists. The warmth of the colours and the comical scenes created the distinctive style so recognisable to the masses. His work lives on. When looking at E. H. Shepherd's legacy, he is more remembered today as the book illustrator than the comic cartoonist of Punch in which he served many decades. By the late 1960s, Shepard had coloured the Wind in the Willows illustrations in full watercolours. By the early 1970s, all of the illustrations were recoloured and a new publication of the book was made. Today he is remembered as a master of his work and he led the way for all illustrators and artists. He was quite the Victorian and modern illustrator leading the way for the 20th century.